Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Fedor, and I'm going to uh, teach Engineering Mathematics 2. Now, um, I'm teaching this, this course for the first time, and previously it was taught by Dr. Tang Gyuk Chu, but now she retired and I'm uh, taking over. Now, her course was very well received by engineering students, and I believe that she did an excellent job in uh, composing all the course materials. So, which is why the first time I'm teaching it, I'm going to just follow um, her course design and her materials very closely. Well, at the same time, I do appreciate if you give me some feedback on how I can improve the course uh, for it in future. Okay, right, so um, we are going to begin with um, the introduction into calculus of several variables. And the first topic for today is going to be uh, the plane and the space. Now, um, we are going to extend basic ideas of single variable calculus to functions of several variables. So that's the main idea. Now, um, today we're going to discuss limits um, at a point and continuity, right? So this basically is going to be done today. This is lecture one, lecture one. Now, um, Later, we are going to look into differential calculus of several variables. We're going to, to see uh, how we can differentiate um, multivariable functions. And we're going to, to look into the integral calculus of several variables, right? So, but these two are in, in future lectures, right? So this is lectures uh, two to something. Okay. So um, now, today our focus is going to be the set Rn. Right, so the set Rn is just the set of n tuples of real numbers. Right, so something like I don't know if you just give me some some numbers like minus one point five, I don't know thirty seven zero and square root of five. Right, so this is four real numbers, so this belongs to R to the four. All right. So in particular, if n is one, then R one is just a real line. So it's just the set of real numbers. Uh, R2 is the set of pairs of real numbers. And you know that if you have two real numbers, then you can visualize them as a point on the plane. Right? So R2 is just a plane. And by the same logic, R3 is the 3D space. Now, uh, so how do you visual, visualize a real line? Right? So you have a real line. Um, the direction is from left to right, usually. So you, you, you place some um, origin is the zero point right so some um, coordinate system on the left and on the right so this is something like one two three this is negative one negative two and then uh, if you want to visualize any real number then you just uh, put a point on this real line right for example uh, the number pi is 3.141 one, and so on right so it is somewhere here this is the number part. Okay. Um, how about, how about the, the plane, right? So um, to to construct the plane, uh, so we basically take two uh, real lines. We we visualize them as perpendicular real axes, uh, axis x and axis y, right? So then we introduce some coordinate system and so on, right? So and then if we have a point here, so this is like three units to the left and two units up. So this is negative three, two. So uh, the intersection point of the two axes is the origin, right? And then uh, every point on, on the plane is represented by a pair of real numbers. And this is a bijective correspondence, so which means that Every point is represented by uh, just a single pair of real numbers, and every pair of real numbers represents just a single point on, on the plane, right? And we call this R2. So R2, strictly speaking, R2 is the set of pairs of real numbers. So it's just that we visualize it as an xy plane. Um, so here is the picture. Right? So and then, if say if you want to find say the point. 
I don't know, say negative two, two. Basically what you do is the first coordinate is negative. So you move to the left of the origin. Now the second coordinate is positive. So you move upwards and this is the point negative two, two. All right, um, now the equation of a line is, is just a linear form on R2. Well, maybe if you are more familiar with equations of the form like y equals, let, let's say, for example, 2x plus 7. So if you can uh, graph, construct a graph of a linear function, then from, from it you can switch to this form by just moving everything with x to the left hand side, right? So you will get negative 2x plus y um, equals 7, right? So your negative 2 is a, your 1 is b, b is 1, and your c is 7. Um, so note that uh, not every equation, I mean, in, in order to, to move backwards from uh, the form ax plus y equals c to the form y equals kx plus l. Uh, basically, you need to solve for, for y, and sometimes it is possible, sometimes it is not possible. So it may not be possible if b here is 0. So for example, um, if your equation is, is just x equals 2, then you can't really represent it as y equals something times x plus something else. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? So and uh, geometrically, this will be a vertical line. X equals 2 is just this vertical line. Okay, um, maybe one more note is that if you... And again, this is useful to know, is that if you have... Um, a plane, right? And if you have um, a straight line given by ax plus by equals c, right? So then if you put any point here and from this point you uh, draw the vector with coordinates a, b, which means that this is a and this is b, then this vector is going to be perpendicular or normal to the, to the line. Okay, so this is how you can find it geometrically. Um, maybe if you are not familiar, there is this um, Desmos graphing calculator tool, right? Um, where you can graph like functions like x square or whatever, and you can even graph equations. For example, 2x minus 3y equals, I don't know, let's say, I think it's 1.5, right? So this is the line. Um, 2x minus 3y equals negative 3 pi. Now, um, I can't probably draw um, on, on this Desmos calculator, but you can imagine that if you start at some point, like at, at, at this point, and then um, if you draw the vector 2, negative 3, so it goes like this, 2, negative 3, then the, the, this vector is going to be perpendicular to this straight line. Okay, um, so this is the equation of a circle, right? So x minus uh, a squared plus one, y minus b squared equals r squared, right? So uh, what do we have in, in this equation? So in this equation, ab is the center of the circle and r is the radius. So why do we have the, this equation? Because, um, well, um, from the... If say I, 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 I draw this on, on, on the plane, so two points, let's say AB, AB and XY, right? So then uh, this horizontal distance here is going to be uh, basically X minus A, right? X minus A. This vertical distance is going to be um, uh, Y minus Y minus B. Right, so this is the same distance y minus b, and then we have this right triangle uh, with two sides x minus a and y minus b, and 
the hypotenuse is by the uh, Pythagoras theorem, the square root of the sum of squares x minus a squared plus y minus b squared, right? And if you denote this by r, then this is going to be r. Alright, so in other words, uh, this equation tells us that the distance from the point x, y to the point a, b is r. Um, again, uh, in Desmos calculator, so we can uh, draw circles. Like, for example, if you want to draw um, a circle centered, say, at the point maybe let's say uh, 3, negative 5, right? So this is the point 3, negative 5. So it's going to be the center of our circle. Um, and radius is going to be, say, I don't know, 3. Then the, the equation is going to look like this, x minus 3 squared plus y minus negative 5. Well, minus negative 5 is really plus 5 squared should be equal to 3 squared, right? so 3, 3 squared. And this is precisely the circle centered at the point 3, negative 5, and whose radius is 3. Okay, um, and well, to get an ellipse out of a circle, we just kind of distort the, the circle, and we can do it by multiplying um, x and y with some constants. So, for example, if you want to distort it, this circle, so let me just copy it, copy the equation. We can say multiply this by, let's say, 0 0.7, and this by probably, let's say, 3. And we're going to get an ellipse with the same center, but the, the size is going to be different. Okay, um, well, now, very often, one kind of writes the equation of an ellipse in, in a slightly different form. So sometimes we, we do it like this, x minus a divided by some, uh, let's say, k squared plus y minus b divided by some l squared equals 1. So this, this is also a common form um, of the equation of an ellipse. All right, um, so everything that I said about the uh, plane is also applicable to the three-dimensional space, right? So um, the x, y, z space uh, is really our, can be visualized as, as just, you know, the, um, the, the 3D space. So every point is represented by a triple of real numbers, a, b, c. So and a triple of real numbers, um, is really an element of R3 by definition, right? And this is what it looks like. Um, it is maybe, it is sometimes a bit hard to visualize because you will have to think in 3D. Well, but, well, um, at least it is still possible to somehow uh, get some, some feeling of what's going on in, in 3D space. Um, well, usually when uh, one draws, you know, introduces the three axes, uh, we are going to, to use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of the z-axis. So it, it means the following. It means that, so imagine that you, I don't know, that these are like huge axes in, in the real, in, in the actual space that, that you live in. And then uh, you, you, you probably stay somewhere here. So this is like a little man, this is you. And then you look from the direction of the z-axis downward to the xy plane and then what you see is that um the rotation from the x-axis to the y-axis should be count counterclockwise counterclockwise and th this is how we know that uh, this is the positive direction and if you see it uh, in the clockwise then it is the negative direction so this is why this is positive and then this is negative Okay, um, here is the equation of the plane. Again, so very similar to the two-dimensional space, to the plane. 
So only here we have uh, three variables instead of two, but still the coefficients at A, B, and C uh, together they form a normal vector to the plane, so or a perpendicular vector to the plane. So for example, if say, um, I don't know, minus x plus 3y minus 5z is 2022, something like this, right? Um, so in order to find the normal vector to, to the, this plane, so if the, the plane looks like this, then if you take any point on the plane, and then if you draw the vector uh, with coordinates negative 1, 3, negative 5, uh, that initiates at, at, at a given point. So then it is going to be perpendicular to the this plane. Okay, um, now here is the vector form. Uh, notice that this is the dot product. I hope you still remember what it is. Dot product. Um, so basically that, that's it. So we know that the dot product is zero if and only if two vectors are perpendicular. So the, the, this condition precisely means that n is uh, perpendicular to r minus r0. Okay. Um, so the equation of a sphere, well, basically because of the same logic as the equation of a circle on the plane, I mean, it has a very, very similar um, layout, right? So only we have three variables instead of two. So the equation of a sphere is just like the equation of a circle, only we have x, y, and z, and a, b, and c, right? So, but it is the same is, is because of the, the same reason, essentially. Well, and then an ellipsoid is something like, um, um, like an ellipse only in the 3D space, right? So it looks, you know, this is what it, it basically looks like, an ellipse. So it, it is like a, a distorted, uh, distorted um, sphere, right? So you stretch it in in one direction, squeeze in some some other direction, and then then you put an ellipse. All right, and uh, well, to kind of pre prevent you from. Um, getting too bored with me talking all the time. So I uh, prepared some little um, interactive quizzes. So please um, stop the lecture now and you know, try doing the, the, this quiz.